Welcome to a video that will show how to determine the unit tangent vector to a curve defined by a vector valued function. Let's start off by viewing a unit tangent vector. So what we're seeing here is a blue space curve and this red vector here is a unit tangent vector, meaning it's a vector that's tangent to the curve at its initial point and it points in the direction of the orientation of the curve, meaning as t increases, the unit tangent vector points in the direction the curve would be traced, as we see here. So again, this red vector is a unit tangent vector. So to determine the unit tangent vector, whether we have a plane curve defined by the vector valued function r of t, or a space curve defined by r of t, the unit tangent vector will be defined by the derivative of r of t divided by its magnitude. So we basically find the derivative of the vector valued function and then normalize it, and that'll give us the unit tangent vector valued function. And the only special condition here is that r prime of t cannot be equal to the zero vector. And we know that from a previous video that if each of the components of the derivative function is equal to zero, the curve will not be smooth at that point, and therefore we could not determine a tangent vector. Let's go and take a look at two examples, the one with a plane curve and one with a space curve. When t equals one, we want to determine the point of tangency and the unit tangent vector. We can determine the point of tangency by evaluating this vector valued function at t equals one. So when t is equal to one, we have the vector with components one, two. Remember, this is in component form, so that means the point one, two would be the point of tangency. So now to determine the unit tangent vector at t equals one, we need to first find the unit tangent vector valued function, which is equal to the derivative of r divided by its magnitude. So r prime of t is going to be three t squared for the x component and four t for the y component. And now we need to normalize this by dividing by its magnitude. So we'll divide by the square root of three t squared squared plus four t squared. Now we could just substitute t equals one into this and have our unit tangent vector. Let's go ahead and simplify this so we have the unit tangent vector valued function. So we're gonna have the square root of nine t to the fourth plus 16 t squared. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this at t equals one. That'll give us the unit tangent vector that we're looking for. So the x component is going to be three. The y component will be four. And we replace t with one here, we're going to have the square root of nine plus 16. Well, nine plus 16 would be 25, and the square root of 25 would be five. So our unit tangent vector has an x component of three fifths and a y component of four fifths. Now remember, this is in component form where the initial point is at zero, zero. We're gonna go ahead and make the initial point one, two, and then sketch this unit tangent vector to illustrate what we've just found. It's a little hard to see, but here's the graph of our plane curve in blue. And then right here at the point one, two, we have our point of tangency and this red vector here is tangent at the point one, two, and it has a magnitude of one. And again, it points in the direction in which this curve would be traced out as t increases. Let's go and take a look at another one. So notice here we have a space curve defined by a vector valued function. Let's first determine the point of tangency by evaluating this at t equals pi over six. Let's go and sketch the reference triangle just to review pi over six would be 30 degrees. So here's the angle that would be pi over six, and this would be one, two, and square root of three. For the x component, we'll have two times sine of pi over six would be one half. The y component would be four times the cosine of pi over six, that'd be square root of three over two. 
And for the z component, we're going to have 4 times the sine of pi over 6 squared. That's going to be 1 half squared. So simplifying this, we'll have the vector 1, 2 square root 3, and 1 half squared is 4, so we'll have 1 for the z component. So this is the vector with its terminal point on the curve at t equals pi over 6. The point 1, 2 square root 3, 1 would be the point of tangency. Now let's go ahead and determine the unit tangent vector valued function. So we'll find the derivative of r and then divide by the magnitude of r prime. The derivative of 2 sine t is going to be 2 cosine t. The derivative of 4 cosine t would be negative 4 sine t. And then for the z component, we'll have to apply the chain rule. So we'll multiply by 2, that's going to be 8 times sine t times the derivative of sine, which is cosine t. Now we need to divide by the magnitude. It's going to get a little messy here. We have the square root of 2 cosine t squared plus negative 4 sine t squared plus 8 sine t cosine t squared. Let's go and simplify this. So we'll have the square root of 4 cosine squared t plus 16 sine squared t plus 64 sine squared t cosine squared t. Let's go and take this to the next slide and evaluate this when t is equal to pi over 6. So the x component is going to be 2 times cosine pi over 6. Cosine pi over 6 is going to be square root 3 over 2. So we'll have 2 times square root 3 over 2. For the y component, we'll have negative 4 times the sine of pi over 6. That will be 1 half. And then here we're going to have 8 times the sine of pi over 6. That's 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 will be square root 3 over 2. And our magnitude is going to be the square root of 4 times cosine pi over 6 squared. That will be the square root 3 over 2 squared plus 16 times sine squared pi over 6. Well, pi over 6 is 1 half, so we'll have 1 half squared. And here we're going to have 64 sine pi over 6 squared is 1 half squared. And then we'll have square root 3 over 2 squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we're going to have square root 3. Here we'll have negative 2. And here we'll have 2 square root 3. Here, Square root 3 over 2 squared is 3 fourths. 3 fourths times 4 would be 3. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 16 is 4. Here we're going to have 64 times 1 fourth times 3 fourths. And that's going to give us 12. So our magnitude is going to be the square root of 19. So the x component will be the square root 3 over the square root of 19. The y component will be negative 2 over the square root of 19. And the z component will be 2 square root 3 over the square root of 19. Remember this unit tangent vector is in component form. So the initial point would be at 0, 0, 0. And these would be the coordinates of the terminal point. What we're going to do now is graph this where the initial point is at the point of tangency as we see here. So we get an idea of what that vector would look like. So here we see the space curve, and this red vector here is a unit tangent vector. So when t is equal to pi over 6, which is approximately 0.52, we found this unit tangent vector here in red. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found these examples helpful. Thank you for watching.